All right, welcome back to SolidWorks at Home. This is the second part of the kitchen knife sheath. And in this video, I'm going to be going over splitting a part into multiple bodies, uh, creating a simple sweep feature, uh, using save bodies to break out those multi-body parts into separate files, and then using the assembly to check motion and collision. All right, so starting with the split tool, this feature allows me to break a part into multiple bodies using either reference geometry, sketches, reference planes, uh, surface bodies if you're into surface modeling and need something more complex. Kind of the big benefit of this is that it doesn't remove any material when it breaks these into multiple pieces. All I have to do is choose my trim tool and then choose which bodies I want to cut and those are the ones that I'm going to end up with. Okay, so time to get some sketches ready for the sweep. So generally we need a path and a profile for a sweep. And we usually always create the path first so you can attach the profile to the path with a pierce relation. So sweep paths are a good time to use the sketch fillet tool because it's useful for smoothing out the path. The sweep feature can also automate just a circular profile. So if you just want a circle to be running through that, then that's great. Uh, in this case, we're gonna use a square profile because it's gonna print better. And then we'll just end up using a fillet to round off the pivot area. Uh, when I'm in this fillet area, you'll see that uh, once I fill out those backsides, it's gonna basically make this whole thing circular again. So I'm gonna turn off tangent propagation, which will keep the fillet restricted to the ends. So now I'm just doing a little organization. I always like to keep things organized into folders in my tree for easier editing, and that way I just don't have this huge tree that's building up. So since I'm basically building an assembly in this part file, I can use the other components to reference each other. So here I'm making a little mounting boss for this pivot here, and I can use things like up to surface for the extrusion. I use offset entities for the sketch. And for the second body, I can actually even start the sketch from a face of that part instead of at the sketch plane. Okay, so now I have my three base bodies here. At this point, I'm going to use save bodies, which you can get to by right clicking on your solid bodies folder. And I'm gonna save each of these pieces out into a different file. So you might be using this for manufacturing purposes or file management purposes. You need multiple file types. For me, I want a usable assembly. So I want to take advantage of the assembly motion and some of the tools inside the assembly uh, environment uh, for finishing the design of this swivel lock. I'm gonna float just the swivel lock here and then mate it into place like a traditional mate. That way I can swivel it all around here and then I can use the collision detection tool to determine if this thing can actually get the range of motion that I want it to. So you can see I'm gonna go back and forth between the part and the assembly and make sure that I can get this thing moving the way I want it to. If I wanted to also be able to kind of utilize a similar option in the part environment, I could use the move copy bodies tool. So right now I'm actually going to swivel this thing into its colliding position so that I can work on some more features with this in the position where it would actually be locked into place. So I took a measurement in the assembly file and then it transferred that to a move copy bodies feature in the part file so I can get it into that position. All right, finally, when I have that in place, the reason why I wanted this pivoted in the right spot is I need to make a little lock. So this is going to have be something where it would be colliding and would have some interference, but that way it has some something to have to push past and then kind of lock it into position. So I have that in the position that I like here, and then I'm just using some spline sketches to kind of a, a adjust the shape of this until I get something that I kind of like. 
Uh, a lot of this is just being able to iterate and kind of test the function of these components while staying inside of SOLIDWORKS. Uh, obviously, I've been talking a lot about 3D printing, so I do end up 3D printing this thing and uh, being able to really test the function there, and it works quite nicely. Uh, in the last part of this video, we're going to go over how to take images and utilize them in SOLIDWORKS. So I'll go over sketch picture, auto trace, uh, as well as a 3D texture tool that can kind of help you get a pattern like you see on here onto models of your own. So I will see you next time on SolidWorks at Home. Thanks for watching.